What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyd, and I am back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the top of the map in the red color playing as Hades. His name is Ragnarok. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Zeus. His name is Murad the Fourth. Also known as AC, I believe. AC, Murad the Fourth, same player. Zeus versus Hades, shenaniganry, shenaniganry, shenaniganry on Frozen Wastes. I was personally told that this, this game was not bad, so gonna have to check it out. We talk about, let's just talk about the Greek mirror first, and then we can talk about how it differs when you've got Zeus in the picture. So the Greek mirror, what ends up happening is without any real access to destructive uh, classical age units, Greek really struggles to make anything out of the units that they build. Uh, so the example would be if you play Hades versus Poseidon, the Hades player goes Athena, the Poseidon player goes Hermes, and neither player really has a unit in the classical age which is going to be able to de destroy a town center. Or create much pressure on a town center. So, the conclusion is that you can just take a town center and you're going to be fine. Now, there are some fringe cases, especially with Hades and Poseidon. Well, that's there are some fringe cases where the, the Hades or Poseidon player can go through Ares. Now, if you are playing as... Uh, potentially, if you are playing as uh, Hades and you decide to do an Ares rush against Poseidon... You can be asking, well, Centaur potentially going to come into the picture to deal with your stuff, or are you going to be able to do enough damage with all those Cyclops? So, if we take the game out of meta, and we're trying to punish what I would like to call the meta, then yeah, nothing's really going to happen. Or something could happen. But, if everyone plays standard in the Greek mirror, nothing happens all too much. However, when Zeus comes into the mix... We come over to Murad's base here and check out Zeus. When Zeus comes into the mix, Zeus has got access to Centaur. And not just access to Centaur, but access to Centaur straight away. With 15 favor in the bank, that means you can afford an Odysseus, a Centaur, Jason, off to the races. Feeling great about your life choices. So... We'll see how it's going to go. Normally, when you have the Greek versus Zeus kind of situation, the, it really all comes down to the map as to whether the Greek player, or the Zeus player, I should say, decides to go for Centaur or not. This map here, Frozen Wastes, if you take a quick look at it, those Centaur can swing around in the bottom. They can swing over here. They can swing over here. They can swing over here. There's, It's very, very hard for... For the Hades to wall up here. If he wants to wall up his back here, he's got to wall from here to here and here to here. So, I mean, one way to make it a bit easier would be to chuck your temple up at the back and then a wall across to your temple. Maybe build a house or two here and then wall this off. And then you have to worry about the front to wall that off. You have to get your second town center as well. So you got to wall around that. It's just very, 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 very tough to get all the walls set up against the centaur. So we'll see what Ragnarok is going to be going for as uh, Murad is, is literally telegraphing his strategy. He's, he's, the temple is forward. The villagers are on the prayer. Ragnarok, he hasn't spotted it yet, but he should, he should know. He should know what's going to be happening here as... Uh, the Katoska boss is going to be moving around, just checking everything out, seeing exactly what he needs to know. The big question is, why, what is what is Ragnarok going to do? Because real, in reality, he's only really got one option against uh, against Hermes, and that is grab a second town center. But the the bigger reality is, I mean, that that there are surprisingly like there is surprising options like catch your opponent off guard where you, your opponent thinks you're going for a second town center, but you go for a big rush or something with a bunch of military units. Super hard to pull that out off. Uh, but if you don't go for the town center, then every single villager that the centaur kill, which they will kill a fair few of, ends up hurting even more. 
Jason has now. Murad wanders through here. He sends his Jason in to slap that villager away. Ragnarok's going to have to pull back here. As the centaur going to be making its way in. The Minotaur on its way up to this location as well. As Ragnarok's going for that second town center. No real surprise. Chiron on the way. Already four favor in the bank here for Ragnarok. He will have to go up to another 200 wood in order to um, actually get his Chiron back out again. As we see this villager going to be getting hit a couple of times here. Is the Chiron going to be coming through? The, the uh, Jason hits the villager there as the Chiron does end up going down. Ragnarok's not going to be able to afford this... Uh, not going to be able to afford this Chiron for quite some time. But the Centaur does get a rare couple of hits onto it by that Minotaur. As we see the Jason coming in here. The villagers on this position getting targeted down as the Ajax does come in. And Ragnarok very safely, very calmly pulls the villager back. This is something that uh, we saw... We saw... Squash do fairly recently with his Poseidon uh, against maybe Eric's Zeus. And the town center gets up and everything is fine hunky-dory for our Hades player Ragnarok. He's going to be dropping down his Sentinel over here. We will be seeing the Chiron coming out soon, I'm sure. There it goes. The Centaur coming onto this position. going to be trying to target down that low HP villager. They do manage to take that one down. Bit of a mistake by Ragnarok to put the low HP villager out on this berry bush. Could have been chucking it onto the Hurtables or something and being completely fine there. But we do see at least one villager going at the wayside here of Murad as... Murad has to pull back. Now, the question is, where to next for Murad? Do you go for army here? Do you go for a town center? Legend. And we're seeing the town center coming up. There's actually a really, really good timing. A couple of center come out. And you just have to get roughly one villager kill every 15 seconds to find yourself with a fairly significant advantage there as the Minotaur getting pushed back just a little bit as the current has to swing around and get a little bit of help in here as well. Villagers on this position here getting pulled back. As Murad searches around for something to snipe. And remember what we said. Whole base is completely open here as the Centaur coming through. They will get a little bit scared off by that Chiron. Not wanting to come in just yet. We see the uh, the Minotaur getting taken out as the Jason and the Odysseus going after some villagers here. But the Jason will go down to the town center. And the Centaur come back in onto this position. Going to snipe that low HP villager. Nice play there by Murad. Probably still not necessarily in front, but doing significant amounts of damage here. As the Centaur moving back away from that position there. The Walrus over here going to be getting eaten up. Over here going to be getting eaten up. Murad's got the hunt advantage. He's got the map control advantage. And the big question is just going to be, how does he convert? Now... Hitting this town center is difficult because it's got the sentinels on it. Hitting this town center is, is difficult because there's potentially going to be watchtowers coming through. So Murad has to figure out exactly what he wants to do here. As it looks like he is no longer going to be building Santa. He's just built two or three, just two, three Santa, and he's going to run around the map. I actually really like that. I think three Santa, either three or six Santa is, is the perfect amount in this matchup, as long as you don't lose any of them. Because any more, it might feel like you're further ahead, but in reality, your army doesn't really want to have Centaur in it at all. You kind of want something else. And the Centaur can just move around and, and snipe villages being annoying left, right, and center here is Ragnarok's fairly dead set on, on uh, maintaining this forest line for himself here. As... The yeah, Ajax here has to just hang out and defend against the Centaur that, that can't really do all too much. So you see some cheeky raids coming back over here with the Odysseus and the Centaur. But the uh, the Chiron here going to get a couple of hits off onto the Centaur. And Murad doesn't end up losing it. Definitely should have. But not just yet. As we see, oh, the third town center now down for Murad. That's a little bit greedy, but he will be able to take a bit of an advantage here in terms of villages. So we'll see how it's going to go. As the Odysseus has to retreat back. And the question is going to be, like, what exactly does Murad do? I don't see him throwing down any military buildings just yet, which I actually really like. If he throws down an armory or throws down a bunch of barracks as well, 
Maybe not going for Hippocon. Hippocon don't... Well, it's not like they don't make sense, but they don't... I think I would prefer to see something something more Hoplite-y into Heliopolis or something. If you go Hoplite, Heliopolite, Heliopolite in this matchup, you kind of just win. With an okay. underworld timing or something like this. As we see these units pushing forward. And it looks like Murad really wants to be... Right in the front of this uh, of this map here, going after these walrus, he can very easily turn around and just shank these Hippocon, but Murad takes that opportunity to ca cast Ceasefire as Restoration gets dropped. And that's going to be a little bit of a slowdown right now for these Hippocon. Now Murad needs units out to kind of defend this because he's over... He's, he's like overreacted in a way. He wants this forward food, but he probably shouldn't really be allowed to have it as he's on three town centers. So we'll see how that's all going to go. There's still a whole bunch of herdables in the base. You could have just pulled these villagers off of wood, taken them home, put these villagers onto wood here, been fine, start throwing down farms, getting your economy in order. Could have been a way forward here, but not what we've seen thus far as... We're now 15 seconds away as the Walrus does manage to pick off a villager there, but we're 15 seconds away from Ragnaros potentially being able to push in and get some villager kills as Murad is going to be motoring forward here with the Jason popping out fairly soon. Villager's finishing up on this location now, just going to be retreating back. Surprised to see him running this way. It's a little bit dangerous. Going to be going after these berries. Makes some sense in a way, but now Ragnaros pushing in get that damage done but Murad can simply just sit back here he's kind of wa he's kind of wasting resources building Toxodi at this point as they don't counter anything that uh, Ragnarox is building here so it's just like there's this thing that the players have where they're like if I build some archers then it's uh it's it's good because because I got wood and I have to spend the wood and the, the real question you should be asking yourself is why do you have wood if you're not if you don't need to build arches? Just build some farms, sort your economy out, live the dream. Uh, as we see the Hippocon moving in onto this position here as those centaur get a special attack off. Getting some good damage, and we see the Hippocon racing straight in onto those uh, onto that Chiron in the back as Murad's micro too strong here and Ragnarox has to pull back. Unfortunately, while this is all going on. We still haven't seen Ragnarok able to get himself that second or third town center here. He's still pumping units out. Lots of farms set up, uh, but Ragnarok is at full population and Murad isn't. So Murad is, not only does Murad have three town centers and he's possibly 80 villages right now, uh, but he, he's got he's the three town centers pumping. So it's a significant advantage for Murad in terms of economy here. And with uh, Murad forcing fights right now, uh, it might be really good for him because he's going to be able to utilize that economic advantage much, much easier. As he does end up losing that fight, but we'll have to pull back here for the time being. As the question really becomes uh, apparent, where to next for Ragnarok? He's, he's got an army. He can put pressure on anywhere. Is this the place to put pressure? I'm not sure. As Murad is <coughs> trying his best to micro this, but that Chiron probably could have taken out all four of those Centaur there. He gets one, going after a second one. The Hippocon going to collapse straight onto the Chiron there as he does manage to sneak his way out, but with three HP, almost going to be falling. Maybe not worth it to keep him alive anymore. As Murad is more than happy to push out here. Let's check Murad's perspective. He is going through Dionysus. Dionysus is a very, very... I, I, actually, I, I just don't like the Dionysus. But let's talk about why he might be thinking about Dionysus. So, on Frozen Wastes, as the fighting uh, kind of continues here. On Frozen Wastes, you've got two gold mines, or gold mines on either side. Uh, so it's obvious where your opponent's going to be mining gold. You don't have to find them. They're going to be on the sides of the map. You just have to hit there. So if you can get a strong timing onto one of those sides, then you can win the game in that position. Now, my contention is that while bronze gives you a strong side advantage, your opponent can just leave and go on the other side and be fine. If you underworld from here over to here, 
then you get control of the entirety of the gold if you can win the fight. And given Murad's got three town centers, he doesn't need the bonus to take an advantage here in this game. As Ragnarok now, he's still motoring ahead, almost at his full villages here, still pumping those Hippocon out. Uh, but it does look like he's losing these fights slightly. The question is going to be why like, Murad, build some Prodromus here. Build some Prodromus. Get your upgrades. He's got to get his upgrades. He gave himself Plow, take villages off of wood. Tons of villages on favor right now. As Murad is with nine villages on, that's a lot of resources not being gathered. It's it's roughly nine resources a second uh, of whatever you want, which ends up being quite a bit a minute. Uh, it's like fifty, almost oh, it's 54, 54 resources uh, a minute that is kind of a minute. That doesn't sound right. Whatever. It's a lot of resources a minute, or fifty-four per times nine. Anyways. That's a lot of that's a lot of resources he's not getting, which he definitely could be using on food and everything else here. But Murad might be able to spam out all of those upgrades that he wants from this from these stables. He's already got himself Spirited Charge, he needs to get himself uh, heavy raiders, and then get himself Thracian horses. And we'll see if that's gonna be enough for him to find an advantage here. We're seeing some military academies be being dropped by Ragnarok. As the uh Aphrodite is coming through for Ragnarok. And now the villagers retreating away from this gold mine here as Ragnarok's going to try and sneak in, take these villagers out here. As it seems like Murad. Maybe too aggressively trying to mine over here. He's got a perfectly safe gold mine here. With a wall, just one wall here, no problems. Maybe throw a fortress over here wouldn't be bad. But Ragnarok right now, he's got the resources, goes straight to the next age. Has to cast a uh, curse onto this position. We still haven't gotten Murad to get himself the uh, Thracian horses just yet. As he's pushing in onto this position, not doing a whole lot. Remember where I said the best places to attack would be over here, over here. Over here, the gold is just about done in the in the base. It is done in the base. As the Hydra is now ro roaming into the main base to get some villager kills. The villagers have to pull off that gold mine over there. And while it's still going on, we still got tons of gold in the main base here for Murad. So he's completely fine here. As, do we have Thracian horses just yet? Still not, still not having it. It could be up at 250 HP-ish on those Hippocon. But now we see... The bronze attack going after the town center here as Ragnarok is surely <coughs> going to be going to the Mythic Age very soon. We see uh, Cheeky Mason's getting research to keep this town center alive. Remember, this is a Hades town center to boot, so Mason's helps out a lot because it's got extra HP or base HP or something like that. As Ragnarok's raids are still going for, he's hitting villages on this location as well. A little bit surprising to see that as more Hippocon coming in over here, hitting the villages in the main base. As Murad with four towns and he's now he's not able to support all of this. Still trying to take this town center down here. He's sacrificing a lot of army to kill this one off. But Masons is through, villages repairing. Army is here to defend. Murad needs to retreat and he finally works that out. He's going to be pulling back right now as Murad just hasn't quite worked out exactly the best place for him to deal damage with these Thracian or potential Thracian horse uh, cavalry that he's managed to assemble here. As we see the Odysseus getting pulled back over here as it's getting chased down. Again, you've got 14 villages here. You've got one villager over here. That's a lot of damage, potential damage that could be getting done and shutting down the ability to rebuild this army that Ragnarok is, is made over here. And now we see the Odysseus able to start targeting down that Nemean line, getting the bonus damage in. Chiron in the back, shooting away, doing his best, his darnest here. And the Nemean line will indeed be going down, but Ragnarok's army is now looking scary. He's able to push through, he's got himself Copper Mail. Uh, Murad has nothing, Murad's at 114 population, he's... Struggling for resources quite mightily here as he's pulling back, dropping some archery ranges as well to maybe start getting some of those out. As now Ragnarok is moving back up to the top side of the map, he might see these villages over here. In fact, he will. 
Oh, excuse me. In fact, he will see those villagers as they're going to immediately pull back with the villagers here for Ragnarok's going to move on to this gold mine to try and grab that one for themselves. As we finally see Murad making an aggressive move up onto these villagers over here. And Ragnarok's very, very quick on his feet there. Pulls the villagers immediately. Probably not even going to lose a single one, but Murad does, or maybe one villager will go down. But Murad does get away fairly unscathed there, or Ragnarok does get away fairly unscathed there. Uh, as Murad is kicking himself for not being a little bit more sneaky here. If you take a look at what Ragnarok can see, come around this side, come around this side, hit here. Could have been uh, some dead villagers, that's for sure. Now we see the Hippogon moving forward, and the big thing that's coming right now is Artemis. Artemis on the way for Ragnarok means a, a few things, but w w the most important one is that Earthquake's going to come, potential town center will fall. And then Ragnarok's going to try and get his town center back. The other thing that's going to come, which is very difficult to defend against, are the Chimera Raids. Especially when you have to get onto your gold on the sides of the maps. Normally, to stop Chimera Raids, the best way to play is to put walls up, get stone walls, and then kind of just, you're, you're fine uh, to deal with all of that as we see some uh, Hippocon coming back. When you're getting raided by Hippocon, the best way to reply is just send like a handful of Prodromus back and chase them down. If you run with the Hippocon, they run a little bit slow as opposed to those Prodromus, which run at 6.6 .6 speed. As those units are mostly getting picked off here, we see some raids coming in onto this gold mine. Murad's now at 179 of 180 population. He's got to mark it up. He's going to have the resources to advance fairly soon as we see the units wandering through four Ragnaroks. We don't have ourselves masons here, so unfortunately it seems like most of these buildings will be going down if a ra if an earthquake does get thrown, thrown down here. And we are indeed seeing exactly that. The town center goes down. The, the stables at the top are mostly unscathed. But town center down, Chimera out. Units getting dealt with nicely over here, but Ragnarok's is running out of units yet again, or at least not on that position. Because now Ragnarok's got 16, <coughs> 16 villages on gold here. Looking for more raids. Pushing Murad off gold. He's playing this one really, really nice. As Murad is searching around the map here, it seems. Four more gold mines, but there is one here that he's missed as you'll have to retreat back and find that as he does spot, or will be spotting that in the near future. There he goes. <clears throat> and Murat decides to go through Hera here. I actually don't hate this as much as I might have thought immediately there. I thought, oh, my initial thought was why not he why not Hephaestus? You get the plenty vault, you get the, the kind of unbeatable Colossi. Uh, but then I thought, well, the Chimera are actually the problem that you have to deal with. If you can deal with those, then you're golden. So what, what deals with Chimera? The best for, for Zeus? Well, Medusa did. You see a ton of units coming in for Murad. He'll be hitting these units as best as he can over here. We see the villagers getting taken out nicely. And then I guess the next question is where would you drop the, the lightning storm? And I think the answer is up on this, this location over here. You have to try and push off that. As the Chimera spots the gold mine not there. And Murad might be spotted over on this position. We do have the Heracles in. The villagers moving around trying to get these walls up as best as they can. We'll see a little bit of damage coming through, but the walls will in the end probably finish up here. Nice play there by Murad Clutch. Definitely want to be thinking about getting yourself stone walls here as well if you can. As the units retreating away. Mostly Hoplites here against Hippocon. I'm surprised he doesn't just turn and take that fight as best as he can. And as we see over here, the Chimera is still moving around the map. Ragnarok has to figure out a way in which he can get Siege onto one of these forward town centers or take this one for himself. Over here we do see this Medusa getting taken out. Unfortunately for Murad, there was a Chimera right behind him. That, that was going to be uh, a very, very nice usage of that special, but... Doesn't end up being able to click on it as the Chiron just about to go down pretty close to falling. Chimera coming in over here. If we take a quick look at that Medusa. It's only a 20 second recharge time as the Heracles comes through the Chimera. A little bit, a little bit trapped here. As Ragnarok's kind of not missing that one there. And it does end up falling. A little bit unfortunate there for 
Ragnarok as he gets kind of path blocked a bit. Meanwhile, over here, we've got these Toxo, not Toxo, these Pop Lights. we be getting Lightning Stormed in the middle of nowhere. Obviously, you have to throw it down somewhere, and <coughs> sometimes just using it to get the economic damage dealt is the best way. And you can see Ragnarok's dropping down to 114 or 115 of 140 population. That might be enough for Murad to get his, his, uh, his town center back and have an advantage here in this game. Murad's trying to get himself the Bellerophon out. Oh, Medusa next to Chimera. And Murad spots it. There's a dead Chimera. Nice play by Murad in order to stop those Chimera raids. So the question is now, do we stop Chimera? Haven't seen Ragnarok stop them with the... With the Medusa out, potentially more Medusa coming out. Might be like, well, maybe not. We'll just not go for those. Uh, we'll just not go for those Chimera anymore because Medusa are kind of hard counter. As we can see over here, this, this Chimera has to avoid the Medusa at all costs. As meanwhile, the fighting on the front still going ahead, but... This is one of the interesting things. I feel like Murad's had map control the whole time, but he hasn't utilized the fact that he's got it. He hasn't been on this location. He hasn't attacked anywhere that's weak. We see some nice side builds coming down for Ragnarok as he's playing for a little bit later in this game. Meanwhile, the Chimera that was at the back of Ragnarok's, of, of uh, Murad's base, Ragnarok's Chimera here has to retreat back home. Not a whole lot left for him to do there. There's another Chimera going to be moving in here, but the Medusa former Rad immediately moving forward. 18 HP, 19 or 20, and there goes the Chimera. It's such a strong unit. It doesn't have the quite the speed of the Chimera, but it doesn't doesn't really matter here. As now another Chimera going to be falling, and all all of this is just to say like these these Chimera are the bread and butter of this Artemis game plan and Murad's one Medusa thus far has shut it down completely. As we got villagers over here on this gold mine, over here we see a Medusa coming through to take out the Toxodes as best as she can. She does a decent amount of damage, but will go down. There's no micro there. Now the uh, push is still mounting. Murad doesn't have a fortress anywhere. Magnarox, on the other hand, does. Could be thinking about building Heliopolis at some point. But while this is all going on, Murad's got his town center back, and he's at 150 of 180 population. So he's currently in a lead, but he's not really winning just yet. We're also seeing Hepaspis coming out to deal with those hoplites nicely. And meanwhile, what units over here? We see another archery range coming down here to just cause some problems. Now Ragnarok pulls back. He's, he's got... Well, he does have a problem at his at his doorstep. And that's, he's got a thousand gold left over here. He does have this gold mine somewhat secured. But he will have to move forward to it. As the, uh, the villagers wandering forward. If you chuck down a fortress here, it's kind of fine. But things are, things are a little tough here for... For Ragnarok to seriously hold, so we'll we'll see if uh, if Murad's going to notice the the kind of advantage that he's got, or if he's going to continue to fight in this middle location here. So we do see a fortress coming down, sneaking up on this position though. The uh, enemy fortress will put a stop to it for now, and Murad's going to have to reposition. Right now, Ragnarok starting the trade route nice and early. We see the villagers getting pulled off the gold mine to stop this fortress. Unfortunately, there for Murad, Ragnarok's two on the money to get uh, to get prevented to prevent to get that uh, fortress from going up. Nice play here from Ragnarok's to stop that one. As Ragnarok's pulls back, and Murad now he's he, he he knows that there's villagers here. If we take a look at his perspective, he knows there's villagers here. And he is sending something down. He's sending Medusa down. If this was a mummy, then he would have a lot more potential damage to be done. But the Medusa comes in. They pick off a villager or two. A couple more units uh, will head down there. But for some reason, some way, somehow, 
Murad's village account has plummeted. He's got himself 27 villages over here, or 18 villages over here, 27 on food, 18 villages on wood, so currently 18 idle. That's not 80 villages. And he's trying to support 180 population of uh, economy here. So really, all Murad needs to do is, is sit back, let himself get to population, start a trade route, and be fine. He doesn't need to keep forcing fights at this point. As this fortress getting denied is yet again more villager, uh, village, villager casualties. And Murad is not going to get that one up. As we see these villagers coming over here, potentially Ragnaroks can start shanking these, uh, these villagers as well here. As we do see some units come forward to push off this gold mine. At least Murad has worked that one out. Uh, but Ragnaroks here, we'll see what he's going to do. We've got some military academies being dropped by Murad here to go after these villages as, as they're currently just sharing the gold mine. Everyone's just hunky dory, happy, happy to just uh, hold each other as each other's hands here. As a Chimera going to come forward and get uh, this little piece of, of Ragnaroks as we see the. Uh, we just coming over to, to shank that, and the Chimera moves in to get some serious damage done, but Murad does pull back immediately. But he comes back, though, so the Chimera is going to get the damage done nonetheless. Boom. That's a lot of damage. Handful of villagers go down. Handful very low HP villagers remaining. As now Murad is out of gold. He's got no gold. He can't get this gold mine. This gold mine's ended. This gold mine, no way. Mark it is where no start no start of a trade route definitely could have been doing that here and now we can see Ragnarok is going to be pushing through here to try and pick off a villager but uh, Murad's got time on his hand he, he can start the trade route he's got the town centers but Ragnarok has got all of the momentum right now in this game as we see these villagers here making a break for the tower Murad's Keeping those villages alive pretty nicely, but everyone else is just on the uh, on the warpath. Looks like um, Ragnarok has to pull back here as the Hapaspus come in onto this position, but it's too little too late. Because Ragnarok just started his trade route. It's, it's not the biggest of trade routes just yet, but it's something. It's absolutely something. And we see a, a fortress up over here for Ragnarok. Plenty of resources in the bank. Potential ability to go for a, uh, a Titan here isn't a bad idea either. So we'll see how Murad is going to move back with his uh, with his Medusa to get a couple more kills over here. But 140 of 180 population still can sell some food for gold. It's not the best of 46, but it's better than not. It's better than 18, I guess. As the unit's still coming back in here, Ragnarok's army now hard counters this because he's got, he's fighting against the Pacifist Toxodi. And Ragnarok's will be opting for the Titan route to get himself a town center back. It's not a bad play. He could definitely have thought about in this, while this is all going on, just throwing a, uh, a fortress down here and building a wall around this and starting to Petropolis siege this because there's nothing here at the moment, so... The ability to sneak that up could have been an option as <coughs> Murad does manage to get himself a fortress up over here but Ragnarok says no I don't want that there let me come and shank that down as Murad's still struggling and we are going to be seeing Murad's market getting torn down here as well so the trade getting stopped as well as Murad's got no gold left in the tank here whatsoever. The villagers are almost able to finish this fortress off. The Toxodes taking down the villagers quickly. More units coming in here, but but Ragnarok's is 140 or 140 population. Not only that, his economic, sorry, his armory upgrades are decent compared to um, Ragnarok's. I mean, Ragnarok's has got full bronze. Murad's not quite full bronze, but the point is that. Both players are, are struggling for everything here. As the fortress does manage to stay up, but Ragnarok's secret to the Titans will be able to be uh, thrown down here. Oh God, if you put this right at the back, you're asking for it. You're absolutely asking for it. We do see some units over here. 
But if you can sneak around with some uh, Myrmidon or, or something around the back here, you can have a, a field day with that. With that Titan Gate there. Because now Murad, 129 of 180 population. Idle, no market. Idle donkey caravans. As we do see on this position here now, the uh, the village of Ragnarok coming in to try and claim this gold mine for himself. It's going to be a, a long wait to see these uh, to see this these villagers finish off this fortress. It's got three thousand two hundred and fifty five HP. It's got architects, and it's it's a uh, it's a healthy healthy fortress that is for sure here. As we do have some cheeky Hydra coming in. Will they be able to get some killing blows? There was one. You need roughly two killing blows per extra head. As that's exactly what Rad's trying to do. It's like mass, mass Hydra here might be a way forward. Especially if he can wander up onto this uh, Titan gate and take some, uh, take some villages down and stop the Titan from actually coming out. That'd be a big, big plus there for for Murad. But we have seen time and time again a Titan not being enough to actually finish off a town center. As now Murad pushes in here, going to try and take it out. He's going straight after... Well, I would go straight after the villagers, right? You try and get some extra heads and you're going to be able to one-hit the, the villagers. Still haven't seen any just yet. This is a feeling... A little bit underwhelming. There's the first head. And we'll see if he's going to be able to get another one. As we are seeing some nice micro or potential micro there from, from uh, Murad. There's even more villagers going to be going down. This Chiron will be very useful. As now the, the Hydra can actually two hit. Two hit a villager there. Three heads going up to four heads now. You can basically one hit the, the villagers around this Titan Gate. Uh, as that's exactly what he's doing. But with the Chiron being here at 20 HP, it's too much. And the five-headed Hydra does get created, but does go down as the Titan looks like it will inevitably be created here. Which means Murad in a bit of a difficult situation. So we've seen it time and time again. Greek can hold this, but you need resources. And Murad has no resources. His trade route... His trade route is a shambles. He's got one market producing these. You need to build another market and get this trade started yesterday. Uh, the Titan is here. And it's going to be stamping, stamping, stamping. We're going to take something out. It's now they see... Murad having to retreat back. Ragnarok might be able to hit this location. I mean, the best way to use the Titan when you're in this position is to just use it in tandem with your army and villagers. Go straight after this town center and live the dream where that's concerned. We just see champion archers coming through. Some iron upgrades in and Murad doesn't even want to try it. Got some units coming in on the main base over here as well for Ragnaroks. And Murad somehow, some way throws a fairly significant advantage here four town centers to two town centers has has kind of the god uh the god advantage uh with hera over artemis but just cannot make it work can't secure his gold mines enough doesn't didn't have a trade route set up so he just didn't have the gold income and ragnaros gets the dub i mean all right all Murad had to do here was just sort his economy out a little bit better and start a trade route once you're on four town centers you don't need to kill your opponent immediately just Solidify the position, get the uh, get the population for your economy to support 180 population and go from there. If you guys uh, enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.